ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्र कहावती अरियंतानम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्र कहावती सिद्धानम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्र कहावती आर्यानम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्र कहावती उज्जयनम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्र कहावती सावनम ओम कारम बिंदु संयुक्तम नित्यं धायंति योगिनम कामदम मोक्षदम चैव ओम काराय नमो नमः नमः समय साराय स्वानु भूत्याच कासते चित्स भावाय भावाय सर्व भावांतर चिदे अग्नान तिमिरंदा नम ज्ञाना अंजन सलाकया चक्षुरुं मिलकम्ये न तस्मे श्रीगुरुवे नमः तीर्थं करो जगतना जवंतवर्तो ओमकारनाद जिननो जवंतवर्तो जिनना समो सरण सौजय वंत वर्तो ने तीर्थ चार जग मजय वंत वर्तो नमो ये तीर्थ नायक ने नमो ओंकार नाद ने ओंकार संगर तेने नमो तेस्वी कुंद कुंद ने अहो उपकार जिन वरनो कुंद नो ध्वनि धीजनो जीन कुंद ध्वनि आप्य अहो ते गुरु कानो अहो ते भगवति मातनो जो अचल ने अनुपम गति पामेल सर्वे सीधने मंदी कहो सुत केवली भाषित आसमय प्राप्त अरे मुझे कसुद्ध सदा अरूपी ज्ञान दर्शन मय कर कई अन्य ते मारु जरी नरमा मात्र नदी हरे जमने त्रते मुझ ज्ञान नतिकारक नती वेदक अरे जाने जकर मोदय निरजरा बंधते मज मोक्षने ओम सिद्धि ओम सिद्धि ओम सी सुधा माने नमः जय जिनन uh, today is uh, October 4th, 2017, Wednesday, and uh, we are continuing our discussion on uh, uh, Samesar stanza 12. <clears throat> so far, we have come uh, to the, uh, the, the Tika, means the explanation part, which is written by Amrit Chandra Acharya Dev. Two lines of stanza that was written by Kunkun Acharya Dev 2000 years back. And Amrit Chandra Acharya Dev, 1000 years after, he wrote down the critics on this uh, two stanza. And uh, then, about uh, 200 years, maybe two, 200, 300 years back, uh, Jaichanji Chabra, Pandit Jaichanji Chabra, he gave further explanation in the form of Bhavarth of these stanzas. So, what Kunkun Acharya Dev wants to say in these two, two lines, then Amrit Chandra Acharya Dev practically went in Kunkun Acharya Dev's heart. Remember, thousand years apart, but he went practically in his heart and said what he was thinking while he was writing that stanza. And on that basis, he gave the detailed he gave the explanation. <clears throat> and then Jaichanji Chabra also gave the explanation, further explanation. So some of the points can be overlapping and some of the points depends on each Acharya's uh, capacity, what they were thinking at the time. So here we are, we talked last week about a Tirth and a Tirth Fall. And, uh, let me just bring the slide so that it'll be easier to go through. Share the screen. <coughs> okay, uh, Okay, so la <coughs> last week we had just gone, we just go through a couple of slides from last week. Convention point of view, absolute point of view, Vyavarne, Nishchane. Now, as we said, that it, it, we have to keep perspective in our mind that what perspective one is using. And depending on that perspective, 
we can say that this is conventional point of view, this is absolute point of view. One thing that we tell right now from one event that something is conventional point of view and other thing is absolute point of view, when we change the perspective, then the same absolute point of view can be called conventional point of view also, depending on what is our aim, what is a, what perspective we are trying to use. So that is very important that we have pretty good ideas so far. So if we just say in pure mode of inclination of attachment in the intense or milder form, Tivra rag and milder rag, either of the one, is called convention point of view because rag is not my nature. Rag occurs not even though it occurs in my mode, but it occurs because it is the mode is directing attention to the uh, fruition of the karma. Because if there is no fruition of karma, then at least rag also will not be generated. Of course, generation of the rag depends on soul's own uh, capacity, but there is an associative fruition of karma also present. So when there is fruition of karma present, and the mode is looking at the fruition of karma and that's why there is a presence of rag in my present mode that's why it is called alien object because it's related to the uh, uh, fruition of the karma so if that one is convention point of view then absolute point of view is a pure mode of right faith knowledge and conduct pure mode does not depend on the fruition of karma your mode is generated by itself. There is no uh, nimit present. <clears throat> so that way we can say it's absolute point of view. Pure mode is absolute point of view. And at that time, impure mode becomes convention point of view. Pure mode becomes nishchainai. Uh, 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 then convention point of view becomes, I mean, they, 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 uh, 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 impure mode becomes uh, vyavarne. Okay, now same thing, sorry, same thing that what we call here as an absolute point of view, it will turn out to be conventional point of view because now in the second bullet, we are changing our perspective. What's the perspective in second, uh, second bullet? Now, absolute point of view, not the mode, here this is more, not the mode, but we are telling eternal soul substance as absolute point of view. Soul substance is pure by itself, it's inert by itself, it doesn't change at all. So that's why we make that one as an absolute point of view. And at that time, anything transient, transient thing happening in the soul will be considered as conventional point of view. So. Uh, a pure mode or impure mode, either of the one, it will be convention point of view because eternal soul substance, which is a permanent, which is a, a, a immutable, which does not react to anything, it remains same for uh, for uh, uh, forever and ever. So that's an absolute point of view, and transient mode becomes convention point of view. Now, <clears throat> now we go into the mode itself. When we go into the mode, mode has a three component, origination, cessation, and constancy. Origination, disintegration, and constancy. For example, if we take the ocean, then the wave originating and wave breaking on the beach, that's a origination and a, 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 a cessation. But the water from the uh, wave will be entering back into the ocean and ocean remains constant. So same way here, origination of the mode and disintegration of the mode and why that thing happened? Because there is some constant thing also going along with. Because 
from if there is no constant thing then from where is the origination going to occur now this right away it this it, it disputes the buddhism theory buddhism theory believes that uh, the soul is only transiently in nature and there is no permanency in the soul if the soul is only transient transient in nature then what they believe that at each moment soul is produced means soul is born and next moment that soul is dead so there is no constancy that they are mentioning so if there is only origination and cessation but from where the origination comes from it doesn't come from sky just like that it comes out it needs support on something so if the, the wave needs support of the ocean to come as a wave so the mode needs or support and that support is provided by constancy there's a constancy 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 going on so if we look that is there is a, 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 from, from the flow effect there is a constant constancy going on and from that constancy the origination of the mode occurs and disintegration of the mode occurs so if we consider origination cessation that's a transiency in nature so that's a conventional point of view and eternal state means constancy then it's a absolute point of view so again it just gives us idea about absolute point of view convention point of view to use in perspective uh, i think several times we have said this example before it will be appropriate to use it over here rag rag inclination of attachment is it absolute point of view or conventional point of view how will you define that one if i say rag is there and you put into absolute point or convention point of view where will you put this rag <clears throat> well the two we have to ask question to the uh, the one who is asking question we have to ask question to the questioner that what perspective you want me to use because there is not a single way i can say rag is a absolute point of view or convention point of view why because <clears throat> The, ra the the inclination of attachment the rag rag is generated in my mode i'm the soul in me as a soul there is a conduct attribute and defilement state of the conduct attribute is a rag kiranko yes didn't we we establish this rag is asatput anupcharitya varne Yes, we, we established that, correct? Well, but again, you know, but what perspective? From what perspective will you use it? Upchart vyavarni is right thing, or, or you mean upchart vyavarni? Oh, oh, sorry, asat put upchart vyavarni. Yes, asat put upchart. But why? But but what perspective at that time we are using? Because we are using impurity in the mode, and that impurity can it be? It can be removed. So that's why it's asat put. but it is part of the soul so asad bud uh, i mean part of the soul in the sense first thing it can be removed even though it occurs in the soul it can it can, it can be removed things can be removed that is called asad bud <clears throat> so rag now i am using different perspective rag is occurring within me at this point i'm looking at my phone and i said i like this phone when i said that i like it means i showed my affection towards that object now how is that affection produced affection is produced in my mood and at that time the phone in the outside is working as a instrumental cause but whether phone is there or not there at this moment at this particular moment my mode was predetermined to come as a rag mode only from the time infinite 
modes are coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. And so at this point here, this mode was supposed to be in the form of rag. And at that time, this phone was acting as an instrumental cause and outside. So this rag production occurred within me by myself and because my mode is independent. My mode does not look at the attribute. My mode does not look at the soul substance. Mode says, I'm independent. I'll do whatever I would like to do. No, I, I, I'm a free bird. Nobody can interfere with me. Provided that mode works within the armament of the soul's uh, uh, um, uh, area of uh, influence. I'm living in United States of America and Washington from the government, they came out with the food pyramid and they said everybody has to eat so much meat and so much fish and so many eggs and whatever, whatever. Now, if I'm the tax paying citizen, I, I'm, I have not done nothing wrong, then in my home, it, nobody can interfere and tell me what I should eat and what I should not eat. I'm, I'm free. I'm independent, provided I live within the constitution of this country. Same way, within the soul's constitution, when the mode is remaining, the mode says, I can do anything I like it. So from time infinite, the modes are predetermined, prefixed, and they are coming of their own. Actually, if we think about it, no two modes since time infinite, I have modes coming, 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 coming. For time, future, time infinite in the future, it will come and it will come, 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 come. But no two modes will be the same. So <clears throat> this independent mode occurred. So this rag mode occurring within me independently, if I use that perspective. Kirinko. Yeah. Okay. So. My understanding of what you just said is that no, no pariyai of any goon could ever, no two pariyais of any goon could be the same. Yes. So here's my question. If you have this no, shadda no, goon. No, 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 no pariyai in a given samai. No pariyai in a given samai. Now, now, why, why I'm using that one? Because this one pariyai occurring in one samai right now has influence with in uh, infinite attributes present and infinite attributes they have their own mode occurring within this one semi only it's not only the knowledge mode or the conduct mode or the faith mode it could be a combination of infinite attributes producing mode in a given moment okay so that particular mode Let's say it's exactly the same from knowledge point of view, but it could be different from the uh, conduct point of view, different okay. from the other other uh, 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 other attributes point of view. Okay, so it's a combination of pariyas. It's a combination of it. So, so the, the combination to, the combination for this sama could never ever possibly be the same as the combination of the next sama. Yes, because if we take that one mode, it is a unit. But if you theoretically divide that mode and you dissect that mode, then you will see that, oh my God, there is presence of all, all infinite attributes are present, uh, represented in that mode. So con considering infinite attributes, they could be in any form. My knowledge could be same. My conduct could be same. But other things could be wrong also. There could be different, different intensity. So that's why no single mode. Can we imagine that infinite times modes are coming and infinite times infinite, these modes will keep on coming in the future. And no two are same, same, same single. You know? <clears throat> Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now, now, now what happens? That particular mode occurring of its own right now. So that is nirpeksh. It is not sapex. Nirpeksh means it is independent. It does not depend on anything else. And so because it's nirpeksh, anything nirpeksh 
anything coming independently that is called absolute point of view. Eternal soul substance is inert. Eternal soul substance is nirpex. Nirpex means it doesn't depend on anything. There is no association with anybody. Same way, this one mode occurring in one summer is a transient and the transient independence is there. Transient non-dependence is there. It occurred because of its own. Of course, at the same time, they were associated fruition of karma or the, all those things were there but that mode occurred because of itself only so that's why that mode can also be called the the the, the mode of that rag impure mode can also be called independent it can also be called absolute point of view what perspective we are using when gurudev sri bought this concept there was a absolute uproar in the whole country in the, all the pundits and everything they say how can you come out with such type of things and so when Gurudev explained people still did not digest because they say we have never seen we never heard this kind of explanation but it makes sense so that's a greatness of Gurudev Sri that he has done amazing amount of work and he made it so simple for us to know 10,000 miles away, third, uh, 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 at least 35, uh, uh, I mean, he, he, he expired in 1980, so that many years after, years sitting in our own home, we can digest this kind of thing, in which initially lots of learned people had difficulty understanding. So th th that's why perspective, Each, is any, anybody, you will be given, you will be thrown question or you can throw the question to somebody else and it, then we have to ask what perspective you are using and then i'll tell you it's a real point of view or convention point of view anyway so going to the next one <coughs> if one does not believe more now now it's uh, changing the uh, uh, gear right now and now more Remember, we said mode is transient, mode is transient, mode is not right, mode is to be considered to be wrong because eternal soul substance is right, eternal soul substance is there for eternity, and so conventional point of view is wrong, so mode is wrong. All those things, if we just say, then last week we discussed tirth and tirth fall. Tirth means path to liberation. Path to liberation means what do we mean, what do we mean by path to liberation? Here we are sitting in a first gunstana, and now we intensify our personal effort. We intensify our purushar, and we go and experience ourselves. Experiencing of ourself is called samyak darshan. Is called aspirant stage is called sadhak dasha that is on fourth spiritual development stage and at that time now my path to liberation started samyak darshan started samyak Nan started and part of the samyak charitra also started so now purity keeps on increasing in lips and bounds lips and bounds in that way now ultimately i will get the uh, complete purity so Fourth Gunstana to twelfth Gunstana, there is a progressive increase in the purity going up and up and up. And that progressive step, that progressive part of the curve is called path to liberation. And again, that is a mode. So that is called Tirth. In the, in the uh, scripture, in the twelfth sign, it says Tirth. So that's Tirth, mainly Tirth means. When we just a pilgrimage place is called Tirth, or what uh, 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 um, uh, what Mahavir Swami described Tirth as two parts of Tirth: the Stavar Tirth and Jangam Tirth. Stavar means the stationary uh, uh, place for worship, and Jangam means the movable play, movable the, the things from which we can worship. Stationary thing is like Samet Sikhar, Satrunjay. Pavapuri, etc., those places that 
they are significant where either uh, um, um, omniscient lord was born or omniscient lord obtain uh, uh, one of the panch kalyana or omniscient lord obtain nirvana so those are called tirth they are called stationary tirth stationary pilgrimage places now at the same time uh, uh, mahavir swami said there is also chaturvid sang chaturvid sang means four fold uh, um, uh, uh, tirth also four fold places not places four fold things in which one can also uh, obtain um, knowledge about the soul and everything uh, monks nuns householder men and householder women this four p four categories together is called four fold sang sang means the uh, 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 the the, the uh, communion so those people uh, those four entity are also called movable tir movable pilgrimage places so here what we are saying tir we are not we are not going for the two the here it says tir itself is within me means my pilgrimage occurs within me when i starts get getting in, uh, uh, purity and purity starts increasing that is my tir because i am on the path of liberation so if i don't believe in more remember in a 12, 11 stanza we already already had said that the vyavaharanai abutartha darshit subdane bhutartha che means more was a, a conventional point of view that's why it was wrong and eternal soul substance was of absolute point of view that it was right and so if we come out with that conviction from 11 stanza that mode is impure or mode is not present mode is untrue mode is not not to be considered then over here it says remember mode is present and mode is called tir and that's a path to liberation so if i just say mode doesn't exist means path to liberation doesn't exist now right faith night knowledge and my right, right right conduct modes of the aspirant stage will cease to exist uh, the, 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 uh, as aspirant soul on fourth spiritual development stage going all the way up to fifth, the 12th spiritual development stage that is his progressive increase in his purity that means progressive increase in his right faith knowledge and conduct uh, conduct uh, state and so if we don't believe more then that state will not exist <clears throat> if the mode and spiritual development states are not there then tirth is not there so we have to understand that tirth is present then it it was also saying when one considers eternal soul substances and the absolute point of view then path to liberation is tirth so <laughs> path to liberation is a, con a convention point of view path of liberation is a mode path of pa pa path to liberation is a transient mode and it disintegrates after one samay so it is called conventional point of view but it, 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 its acceptance has to be accepted in its own form we cannot neglect that one this tirth Leads to omniscience knowledge. Now my purity started; it's increasing progressively, going up, 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 and up. And at twelfth gunstana, there is complete purity obtained, and then soul enters thirteen spiritual development state, in which it's called omniscience knowledge. This omniscience knowledge is also the more. It's also the more, but that is the the fruits of the tear. fruit my my teeth was path to liberation path to liberation and now i achieved my liberation so that is the omniscience knowledge and that's a teeth for means uh, the fruition of the teeth so this is also a vyavarna because it's a mode there is the uh, 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 omniscience knowledge omniscience knowledge omniscience knowledge omniscience knowledge each more each moment that more keeps on coming 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 and so 
I cannot ignore that one. So that's a tirth fall. This is a fruition of the uh, uh, tirth. So that also is to be considered in its own way. So along with the tirth, there is associated impurity you know, present and they are not true religion. Now, when I'm improving myself, that means purity increases, means impurity proportionally starts decreasing. So that impurity state also has to be accepted. Of course, I'm not going to put much attention to that uh, uh, impurity because they are going away. But their presence is also to be considered. They are not a true religion in the sense. Monk on the sixth and seventh spiritual development state, he has 28 primary virtues are there. He has a five great vows are there, five carefulnesses are there, three, restra three restraints are there, and seven primary virtues are there. And considering all those things, ultimately there is 28, uh, 28 uh, qualities that can be observed in a monk. But those are part of the impure, once purity is going on, that is also that, that, that auspiciousness is called impurity compared to this purity. So I can see only from externally think that this monk is a naked monk. He eats once a day. He is doing fasting. He remains in the jungle. He does meditation in the heat and cold and rain and everything. He doesn't wear clothes. I just see the external thing. But internally, he has so much purity and he's enjoying his purity. He's happy with his purity. He's engrossed in his purity. He does not worry about what is happening to the body. Food is available. Okay, I will take it. If it's not available, then I don't worry about it. That kind of, that kind of purity from within is most important. We are not able to see the purity. So we just said, poor Mahavir. He has to stay in jungle. Poor Mahavi, he has to suffer into this uh, heat and cold and rain and everything. Poor Mahavi, he was a king, but still now he has no clothes even to wear. We are looking from that perspective. We have to start looking from internal purity state. That what is happening? Mahavi is absolutely engrossed in his happiness. He doesn't care what happens to his body and everything. Uh, so, uh, this one, I think it already came, uh, <coughs> so we can just, uh, so now, now comes a further explanation, means Bhavar, means Jaichanji Chabra, now he writes this one. The, the two Bhavarths are written, in the sense, the, the commentaries are written by Amrachandra Acharya Dev, and also by Jason Acharya Dev. Jason Acharya Dev also wrote down and Amrachandra Acharya Dev wrote down. Jason Acharya Dev was about two, three hundred years after Amrachandra Acharya Dev and he wrote down, but Jason Acharya's explanation was more on conventional point of view and Guru Dev just did, I mean, Guru Dev included those things in the lectures, most of the places, most of the stanza, but he gave lots of importance to the detailed explanation for that explanation, Bhavarth of Jaichanji Chabra. So that's what we are going to talk about right now. The example of impure and pure gold that we saw it, when gold is impure, the impurities are given priority. When total purity is achieved, then one does not pay attention to the prior impurities present in the gold. I have 100% pure gold in my possession, so I don't worry where, where was this gold originally, how much was it in the mine? How much dust was it there? How impurities were removed? I don't remember about those things. I don't worry. About, I enjoy the pure gold in my possession right now. Sim similarly, impure, and, uh, impure soul and pure soul is being explained. And we know this slide very well. We have gone through it. So it's kind of more kind of a revision. We'll just quickly go through that one. The example of pure gold on this side and left side is a gold and right side is a soul. Gold and soul. So what, what does go? Impure gold 
process of purifi purity is started right now. Impure soul with rag and dues process of obtaining right faith starts right now. Okay, all right. Partial purity, partial impurity is present and gradually impurities are decreasing, purity starts increasing, same way over here in the soul also, uh, when, uh, uh, once the right faith comes, then partial purity and partial impurities are present, mixed together. Impurities are given importance as they need to be removed. Same thing, rag and base are given importance in the aspirant stage because they need to be removed. In primary importance is my purity, but at the same time, what is leftover problem with me? So how much impurity is present? So I have to start thinking that one too. One knows the presence of impurity, they are for knowing purpose only. So rag and dvesh are present in the soul, in the aspirant state. So aspirant soul says, okay, now purity starts increasing, purity starts increasing and impurity starts decreasing. So he simply knows impurity starts decreasing. That's it. His main attention is on purity, uh, purity aspect. Presence of purity is adorable. Impurities are for knowing purpose only. Same way in an aspirant soul, pure point of view is for adoration. Remember pure point of view? Pure point of view means eternal soul substance, means my attention drawn to the eternal soul substance. That's called pure point of view. So that is for adoration. I respect that one. I, 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 I worship that one. I would like to have more and more pure, purity occur within me. And impurities that rag and dvesh are present within me and they need to be discarded. So they are for knowing purpose. Once complete purity is generated in the goal, no need to know the prior impurity uh, and prior purity impurity state because now I am enjoying my 100% goal that is in my possession. Same way, once omniscience is achieved, pure point of view for knowing purpose only. Now, remember, pure point of view, I was taking support, means I was bringing my attention to the eternal soul substance and keep on increasing my engrossment into the soul substance progressively more and more and more. Now, once the omniscient state is achieved, then the pure point of view has achieved its most important thing. So now there is no need for the pure point of view. So for that omniscience law, pure point of view is only for knowing purpose. Just like the omniscience knowledge knows the whole universe, omniscience knowledge knows past, present, future of me having my modes and everything. So it also knows that there was a presence of pure point of view before. So that's it. It's for knowing purpose only. So we know that part. We don't have to go much detail into that. So now what happens here? <clears throat> Pandit Jaichanji now. Pandit Jaichanji throws a little more kind of he started thinking about us in the first spiritual development state and says, you know, I should take care of these guys too. So he also writes the, about the status of living being prior to obtaining right faith. Prior to obtaining Samnak Darshan means in the Mithya Darshan, means the wrong faith, means the first spiritual developmental state. So what happens in that first spiritual development state? So he throws some light, which is very, very important for us to know. Kiranakal? Yes. Is this, is this similar to uh, Pandit Dodamalji's Samyak Samukta Mithya Drashti? Uh, yes, it will be Samyak Samukta Mithya Drashti. Basically, now you, the soul is in a wrong faith state, but now he has, he has said that, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm just... Uh, 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 transmigrating since time infinite and I'm tired of this transmigration. I want to get out of this circle of uh, 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 pleasure and pain and all those things, mainly pain and all the things. I want to get out of this circle. So he starts looking towards the uh, uh, looking toward the path and what should be his take? That more, that's what Pandit Jaichandi is describing for us. What he says, it, it, it says that in original stanza, this suggestion is not there. Remember, Kunkundachara, they wrote only two lines. 
And Amrit Chandra Acharya wrote down long, long, long explanation that we went through Tirth and Tirthfall and uh, uh, um, adoration and uh, knowing for all those things. But Amrit Chandra Acharya they did not write anything for the uh, uh, first spiritual development state guy. So he, Pandit Jaichanji, is expressing his thought. In the main stanza, it says only about impurities present in the aspirant soul with the right prayer. And now Jaichanji is going to talk about impurities present in first spiritual development state, people like us. So now, what does he say? Even though person is in wrong faith state, he must have at least some knowledge to identify who is a learned person. I want to know something. I'm, 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 I'm a thirsty guy for the knowledge. I'm, when, I'm, when I'm thirsty, I'm looking for water. So here, I'm thirsty for my spirituality. So I have to start looking for some learned person. Now, learned person is the one who in his genuine discourses, when learned person gives genuine discourses, he establishes the inclination of dispassion. Inclination of dispassion means he gives vitrak, vitrak bhavani sthapna kare. What is his main thing for this learned person? I don't want to learn stories and all those things. You know, I mean, I, I, two, three weeks back, one of my close friends came from New York and stayed with me. He was a, a, a Bhagavad guy. And each time we talk, he has a stories to tell me, stories to tell me. I said, listen, forget about stories. Give, give to the, lack of better word, give to the meat part of the things. Give me the real thing of it. So story after story after story comes. And those stories also, they don't have rhyme or reason sometimes. And I think we, we just talked that one last week or week before maybe, that the, the Shankar, this one story that he told me, Shankar is in his meditative state, quote unquote Shankar Bhagwan, right? Now his wife is Parvati and Parvati is uh, there. And so Shankar said, hey, you know what? You, you go out because I'm going to go, go, I'm going to go in meditation. And I, again, I'm not, ma I'm not making a story. This is what they, they are re it's written and they talk about. Now, Parvati went out and their son enters the room and he starts making noise. And uh, Shankar comes out of his meditation and he's extremely angry because his meditation is broken. So he brings his uh, sword and cuts the head of this child. Now, Parvati enters and says, gosh, what did you do? This is our son. Well, he disturbed me. So what do we do right now? Well, ask my, my assistant to go to jungle and whatever first animal or anything that you they see, cut their head, cut that, that animal's head, bring it to me and I'll fix this child's head. So they saw the elephant first. So they cut the elephant's head came back home and now Shankar put that elephant's head on this child and that became Ganpati. Now, this is a story. So he said, essence of the story is how one should not become angry. That Shankar became angry and in anger, he did wrong thing. But number one, if we say Shankar is a Bhagwan, you mean he did not know his own son? I mean, he, he, has, he has less intellect than me. At least I know my sons and daughters and my relatives. He doesn't know his own son, number one, and he's called Bhagwan. Second thing, he, if he cut the head and if he can join the head, why did he not join his own son's head? Why does he have to go to the jungle and kill that elephant? Poor guy has done nothing and his head got cut off. So, you want to tell about the story of anger, but then rest of the thing that doesn't make any sense. So we don't want to do that. What this says, learned person is the one who in his genuine discourses, he gives discourses for the eternal soul substance and how to get purity from that. And uh, he establishes how 
inclination of dispassion to be obtained how to obtain vitrakta how to remove my toxic emotions from myself he shows the pathway for that so this is known as jin vachan learned persons discourses because remember his genuine discourses are coming from where originally uh, uh, omniscient lord gave the uh, uh, discourses and uh, from the lineage of the acharya bhagwan now this genuine uh, this learned person also got the knowledge and now he is giving same thing that he learned from that lineage of the uh, omniscient lord and that's why whatever those genuine discourses are called jin vachan jin means omniscient lord vachan means the discourses so it's a, it's a uh, lord's discourses basically now learned person gives discourses and the smart listener like us must has to do the retention of this knowledge we just heard it it's not only merely hearing it remember how many times me and you went to samosaran infinite times in the past infinite time number one we went as a human being in human life to start with is an extremely extremely rare event and in those infinite human lives that i obtained i went infinite time to listen to discourses of the lord but i did not do the retention of that knowledge i just simply went oh yeah yeah it was very good he gave some discourses and that's it talking about discourses uh, omniscient lord can he speak just like us no the omniscient lord does not give discourses the way we are talking it he doesn't have a powerpoint slides and all those things to show and everything omniscient lord even doesn't want to his soul doesn't speak omniscient lord as a soul remains inert and remains and grows in its own true nature at that time from entirely from his body the sound where they come out in the form of om om is called nirakshari means it has no letters it's a composite word a composite letter and it includes everything in that one word om one later on not word later on and when it comes out that 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 om has so much capacity that wherever it goes to anybody's ear depending on my capacity those words will be heard to me according to my capacity if i am little boy then it will be heard in the form of stories and everything if i am little bit more advanced then i will understand in the form of a conduct that what i should be doing if i am further advanced then i will be able to understand those words in the form of a, a spirituality and a metaphysics and all those things so it depends on what is the listener's capacity and that own will transmit into its own way remember this is uh, om word uh, om later is a sound sound is a characteristics of the matter and this matter has that much capacity if th that matter has that much capacity can you imagine this chetan atma conscious soul has how much capacity then if that matter has that capacity if i'm impressed that oh this is 256 gb phone and this and i'm impressed with that but who is operator behind that phone so one has to try to understand that my capacity is enormous so learned person gives discourses and listener must have to have the retention of this knowledge he should know now how to obtain passionless state how to obtain vitrakta my purity is starting and impurity is decreasing my attention has to be in the purity state only my attention should be secondary attention to the i mean impurities which are progressively going away so that kind of uh, knowledge i should obtain then 
he must show his now that he has obtained this knowledge he must show his utmost respect towards the learned person who has shown the path of dispassion state to him remember very first stanza of a atmasi disastra what does it say je swarup samajya vina pamyo dukha anant samajya vyute pad namu shri sad guru bhagavan remember kupalu dev knew exactly how he obtained samyak darshan he 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 listened to the learned person he retained the knowledge of the from the learned person and then he knew the path of this passion state and with his own personal effort he obtained samyak darshan but in the second second line of the stanza what does he say samaja vyute padanamu means samaja vyute padanamu sri sadguru bhagavan sri means script scripture sadguru means a guru enlightened monk and bhagavan means omniscient lord dev shastra guru so dev shastra guru they were there they explain to me and that's why i got samyak darshan now wait a second very first stanza and kupao dev is messing up whole atma siddhi we just say if you understand atma siddhi proper then you don't need to read any other scripture and a very first stanza kupao dev just made mistake not necessarily he knew what he was writing he knew that people who have basic understanding they will understand what i'm talking he has obtained knowledge his knowledge is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger so his personal efforts are increasing by leaps and bounds day by day by day but at the same time while his knowledge is getting solidified his knowledge is getting stronger and stronger and stronger at the same time there was a vinay vinay attribute respect attribute within the soul the respect attribute also starts growing together uh, along with the uh, uh, i mean uh, along with the uh, so um, uh, knowledge knowledge is progressively going up and uh, uh, respect attribute is also going up means the more of the respect attribute Kupalu Dev gave important importance to the mode of the respect attribute and said, "I obtained some meditation, but it's because of Dev Sastra Guru's presence. So he respects that nimit. He respects that instrumental cause. He did not just say, 'Hey, I'm the greatest of the great. Who cares about it?' No, he was not there. So he must show his utmost respect." towards the learned person who taught him all the thing who has shown him the dispassion state so that respect attribute respect comes automatic the learned person will not go and just scream at the top of the top of his voice that hey i know the thing come to me and i'll let you know and everything he because he knows so much that he just drowns within his own self he gets engrossed within his self and then he doesn't care what other things or what's happened to other people somebody wants to know he is available somebody doesn't want to know he just doesn't go and just push his luck and just say come here come here i no nothing like that he does not advertise himself he also why he is respecting the learned person because he is a guru for him and he also respects the idol of dispassionate lord vitragi bhagwan he he shows his respect to the bhagwan also because originally bhagwan has this knowledge and through his omkar dhvani omkar sound the omkar divine sound we end up knowing all this literature and all the scripture so he should also he is also worshiping idol of the dispassion lord he also he should, he is also studying scripture to further his spirituality so three things came here this is the uh, um, respect towards the learned person guru this is the respect of uh, worshiping to the lord means a uh, lord 
uh, and this is the scripture. So Dev, Shastra, Guru, all those three things he shows respect. This is what are we not doing those kind of thing right now? Yes. Kiranko. Yes. In um uh you know in there is there's, there's a Mangalacharan or maybe it's a Doha. There's a Doha to Mokshmar Prakashak. Mm-hmm. It's a Mangala Maya, Mangala Karan, Vitaraga Vikyan, Namotai Jate Bia Arahantadi Maha. Now in that Mangalachan is is it only Aryan is it only Aryan Bhagan that he's that he's mentioning? See, no, you already said Arihantadi means Arihant plus Adi. Adi means etc. Okay, okay. Etc. Means Adi means it already there is a there's a hidden message that not only omniscient Lord but his divine sound, not only his divine sound, but the uh, the, the Acharya Bhagwan who accepted the divine sound. Not only Acharya Bhagwan, but those Acharya Bhagwan who created the scripture. So all those things are coming within that one. Arihant Adi. Adi means Guru and Shastra, they both are included in that one. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Because you know what it is, most of the time, I mean, if you look at any Mangalacharan, for example, I mean, the, the, it, will, it will just show the respect to some higher entity. Nama Samay Saraya Swanu Bhutya Chakasate Chit Sabhavai Bhavaya Sarva Bhavantara Chide, first Mangalacharan of Samay Sara. And it says, we respect Aryan Bhagwan and Siddha Bhagwan, but I am the Aryan and Siddh. So ultimately, I'm respecting myself. And when I'm respecting myself, then associative entities, Dev, Shastra, Guru are automatically respected. So any Mangalacharan we go, it will have all these three entities that it will be showing Namaskar to them. You know? For such person, now, now, remember, he, he, has, he has come all the way up to here, this bullet. But now, for such person, not yet having Samyak Darshan, this does not necessarily mean that he is going to get Samyak Darshan. But those who are on the path of Samyak Darshan, they will be passing through these stages. So if I am passing through these stages, maybe I am, the, I am on the path to Samyak Darshan. Well, two ways to look at it. If you look from Kupaludev's perspective, Kupaludev gives kind of encouragement that, listen, son, don't worry, you're on the right path. Keep going, keep going, keep going. You will get some aggression. And Kunkun Acharya Dev and Guru Dev says, okay, wait a second. I, I don't give you guarantee that this will lead you to some aggression. So we have both the perspective in our hand. One gives encouragement that keep going. The other one says, till you come over here, there is nothing is achieved. So, for example, I want to become a PhD person. So, I'm getting encouragement in the early stages, keep going, keep going, keep going. But I may fall down somewhere on the line. This one says, my aim is so solid. If I keep looking at this aim, rest of the things will automatically occur. My purusha will occur in that direction because this DA, this aim is very, very solidly sitting in myself. So we have to go from both those things and we have to balance ourselves and keep going in the straight line. So we will be we'll, we'll obtain the right faith ultimately. Kiranako? Yeah. Since we're talking about Mangalacharans, is it true that the uh, Nokar Mantra is a Mangalacharan for Shatkhandagam? Uh, yes, Shatkhanda Gam, the, in the, it was written in the very first time mention of Namuka Mantra is there is in a, a Daula actually, Daula. Shatkhanda Gam came after Daula. Shatkhanda Gam is Daula's Tika, Daula's explanation. Oh, I thought, I thought Daula was the Shatkhanda Gam's Tika. No, 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 Daula is the original one. Okay. My, 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 that's my knowledge, you know, because Jai, Daula and Jai Daula was written by uh, uh, Pushpadant and Budbali Bhut, Acharya, and thereafter, it, uh, um, uh, Shatkhandagam and all those things started coming out. You know? Okay, so we have to keep in mind, you know, am I on the right path right now or not? 
Yes, I am. But then, you know, there are also sidetracks that I may just fall down and everything. But my aim has to be also solidified. And my path has to be understood. Both the things has to be done. So now, one who is an aspirant soul, what does he do? Once you have obtained Samyak Darshan, what does he do? He must observe following things too. He should listen to Jin Vachan. He should meditate upon the Jin Vachan. Adoration of his Guru. Worshipping omniscient Lord and study the scripture. Same thing that what I did in beginning, aspirant soul keeps doing the same thing again and again to further his spirituality. Now, right faith person wants to discard his attachment towards alien object. Right? Because right faith person has purity started, but impurities are there, so he wants to take that, discard these impurities. For this reason, for this reason, to remove the alien uh, alien attachment, he gets involved in five greater or lesser vows, Panch Anu or Mahavrat, five carefulness, Panch Samiti, three restraint, three Gupti, and meditate on five supreme being means Panch Parmeshti Nudhyan. Now, we will just touch a little bit of those things. Um, Five greater and lesser vows. What does greater vows? First thing, what are the five vows? Five vows is a um, non-violence, non-stealing, uh, speaking the truth, um, and, uh, celibacy, and non-possession. These are the five vows. Now, here the word comes greater vows and lesser vows. What is that? Means Anubrat and Mahavrat. Anubrat, what is Anubrat? What is Mahavrat? Anubrat is present in a, uh, in a household. Mahavrat is present in a, uh, a monk. Lesser vows are present in the householder. Greater vows are present in the monk on the sixth and seventh spiritual development state. What is the difference between greater vows and lesser vows? For example, if we take the non violence vow, non violence can be uh, Nonviolence can occur by at least nine ways, minimum nine ways <coughs> uh, mind, speech, and action. Plus, to do it, ask somebody to do it, and encourage someone to do it. Three times three, nine different ways one can create violence. I may think about violence that, you know, let's say that I have a, a, a bug bite occurs. The tick bite occurred to me that all the tick needs to be killed from this universe. Wait a second. I just thought about it. I didn't do anything but killing the, the whole genesis, the whole tick organisms everywhere in the tick to be removed. I just thought about it means I acquired as much pop as if I really, really killed those millions and billions of teeth. So, mind, speech, action, do it, to ask somebody to do it, and to encourage someone to do it. Three times three is nine ways we can create the path in which the, the, the lesser vows, lesser vows of the householder, they are mind, speech and action do it someone to do it so three times two is six different ways that householder commits the sin i'm sorry i don't know what i'm thinking i'm just taking those things back i'm sorry monk 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 is observing three times three nine different ways he is observing non-violence completely. Now, for the is that because it's three guptis times one vachankaya? No, 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 no. I mean, right now, only uh, 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 do it. Someone to do it. Encourage someone to do it. Three things and one vachankaya. Okay, karu, okay, anuvodhu and then one one vachankaya. So nine different ways. That means this is the Mahavra. This is the uh, um, greater vow for the monk. 
Now, householder, householder, he is living into the society and he has certain limitations and everything. So, Anumodna, to the encouragement, that part is not present. I mean, it is neglected in uh, householder. So, he does, uh, but he is given only six different ways. So, if you do the Samaik, there is a word will comes that I am taking Samaik with six koti, that I won't do the, 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 the pop for six koti for next 48 minutes. So, six koti means three and two. Man vachan kaya, karu kara would doing and somebody is doing and ask someone to do it. Those are the things I am going to be refraining. So, that should be my way of working. Other way of looking at the non-violence. For example, uh, I'm not example, but for, for monk, he has to have total, total uh, observation of all the living being. Means one sense to five sense, the living being, uh, the, the uh, monk will not do the violence. Now, for the householder, two cents to five cents living being, he has to observe non-violence for those lives. One cents life that uh, the, the householder is being given little bit of a uh, little bit of a relaxation. Why? Because as a householder, I have to use the electricity, I have to use the heat, I mean uh, heat to heat the water, I need the heat or to, to I need fire to do the cooking and uh, I need to use the water and all those things. I have to do the plowing of the uh, uh, field and everything. So those are the activities that one has to do, household has to do it. So he's advised not, no, he's advised to observe non-violent from two to five cents only, one cents he's given kind of little relaxation. That doesn't mean that I go out of the house and my fan keeps on going, lights are going on, air conditioning is going on. No, one has, or I'm taking shower and the hot shower, I'm sitting there for 20, 30, 40 minutes. No, you use those things wisely. Use it with minimal violence. So that's called lesser vows and greater vows. That's a difference. So there are also non-violence, non-stealing, telling the truth, celibacy and uh, 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 non-possessions. Non-possessions, for example, for the monk, even he cannot keep clothes or the uh, utensils and everything. He has only his body as his own possession and that's it and nothing more. Even he will not keep scripture with him. He has only two things with him. He has that uh, 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 rajoharan means that uh, the, the, the broom type of thing and he has one kamandal which is kind of a little little wooden thing which will hold water. He doesn't use this water from drinking purpose, but when he has the uh, uh, urination or defecation to clean himself, he is using that water. His rajoharan, this broom, when he's walking, he's using to make sure that there are no no living being present on his path. So those are only his possession. So the, 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 these are the uh, monk's possessions. For the householder, you have to use as little as possible with your requirements. And those are the, so that way, lesser vows and greater vows, they come in picture. There are also five carefulnesses and three restraint, means the, the monk uses certain careful situations and he also used restraint, man vachan kaya, means spoken words, um, mind, mind, mind's activity and uh, body action also. He is using restraint and he uses only when he has to body actions or, sp or speech. Monk does not say, hey, give me a microphone and I'll start speaking and screaming. No, he doesn't do that. So those are the things that uh, uh, he, he get, the, the, the aspirant soul gets involved with such type of thing. He also starts praying for supreme being, five supreme being means Aryan Sid, Acharya Upadhyay Sadhu. He just meditates on their virtues and says, 
I would like to have those virtue within me also get cultivated. So this kind of thing that he is doing, but but all those things are called auspicious inclinations. They are not the one for it, it, the, the experiencing of the soul, but they're associative things. And that associative things are in this samasa called impurities. When when the when the, when the uh, aspirant soul is on purity state, this all the second bullet things are mentioned. They are mentioned as impurity. That means he does not have thought about the pop and everything. He does not even think about inauspiciousness. But even this auspicious thing that he is doing, all this thing in the second bullet, they are also auspicious inclination. They are Consider as impurity present within. So, to know more about spirituality, he also reads scriptures and everything. So, he while he's not reading scripture, he's all observing all the second bullet situations and everything. So, ultimately, he refrains himself from inauspiciousness and the, whatever auspicious inclination he has it. He does not give importance. Remember, he is going on the path, I mean, path to uh, uh, purity, and all these impurities he needs to take it out. So all that second bullet thing also will start coming out gradually. He follows about guidelines and also show the path to the others. Also, he shows, he tells others that this is impurities within me, and I need to remove this one. Kunkun Acharya Dev, when he is writing Samaisar, when he does extreme amount of uh, um, uh, 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 <coughs> help to us, to all lay persons, but then Kunkun Swami says, it is my weakness, weakness that I am in this auspicious state. But of course, his weakness to be in auspicious state was a big, big, big deal for us because that's why we know all this thing today. Discourses of the convention aspect does not mean that soul can do activities of the alien object. Remember all those auspicious activity in the previous slide that we saw does not mean that he's helping the alien object. He performs auspicious activity to refrain from inauspiciousness. He wants to stay away from path. He wants to stay away from power, so he's observing this um, the auspiciousness, and so ultimately he also gives less importance to this auspiciousness because they are co considered as the impurities. So ultimately he keeps on climbing on the path to uh, sp uh, uh, spirituality. But one should not be under false impression that these activities will lead to him to right faith. Remember, all these auspicious activities are yeah. Is the red one discourses of the conventional aspect? Does that mean that the soul can do the activities of the alien objects? Say that. What was that again? No, no. Uh, oh, discourse on, uh, of the no, no discourse of the conventional aspect. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 okay. Discourses that I, I, I get discourses that okay, you observe five greater vows. You observe five carefulness. You observe three restraint. You observe five supreme beings uh, uh, meditate and everything. All those things are called auspicious inclination and discourse is coming from those the discourse is coming for those auspicious inclination things are called conventional aspect. That does not mean that soul can do those activity of the alien object. He, he knows that on the path to his purity, all these stages are going to come. And so he has to be aware of those things, but they are to be secondary. Primary thing is my discourses have to be for eternal soul substance only. Remember this slide. Uh, where is that one? Uh, no, I think I go. Uh, here, uh, he, uh, this guy, learned person, one who is genuine, one who is genuine discourses. Discourses have to be genuine for the for purity only, 
but also at the same time some other discourses also will come that there are associative impurities are present you should be aware about aware of those things also and when those things are coming you one does not have to get uh, stuck to that thing you know so so one should not be under false impression that this uh, 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 auspicious activity will lead him to the right faith generally speaking let's say we just finished pollution last month what was the la, uh, on the uh, on the uh, uh, after the pollution day after the uh, samvatsari day what was most important thing pana was important thing in what was happening that those who have done one day fasting two days fasting four days fasting eight days fasting so varshita and all those people they were given so much importance in the community and person like me who ate three times a day says ah oh, this guy did nothing so we are giving importance to those quote unquote external auspiciousness but remember one has to remember how much spirituality you gain inside i mean I, 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 somebody was telling me one time that there is one person in bombay that every year he will do eight days of fasting and he's a businessman so when the pollution comes he goes to his work 2 hours early and comes back 2 hours late why because he says while i am at business and everything i forgot about eating so not to eat has become more important to him so that it gives four more hours of his activity in the business is he doing anything good or is he acquiring more and more pap doing business so that important thing we have to keep in mind that we uh, traditionally oh yeah they, they, this guy did 30 upas and this guy did 16 and this guy ate and everything but important how many people did this scripture reading and all those things we don't give importance to those things i have seen people that they have done upas and everything and now they cannot drink the boiled water because they keep on vomiting and vomiting and vomiting so whole day they said i'm getting severe headache so they keep on lying down is this the way to do upas and do the pollution or you eat three times a day decent meal and do your proper spirituality as a clinical you know uh, subhash bhai said to me that uh, said to us once that unodarita is the most difficult kind of thought who oh, yeah it's, i mean every austerity every tap is difficult to do i mean difficult to do in the sense because we are so used to it eat and drink and all the time and suddenly not to eat not to drink that becomes quote and quote tough job but if your determination is strong within and if you are going to do your uh, uh, scriptural reading and all those thing during that time and increase your spiritual knowledge that is the most important thing in the parish does not mean that i'm telling you not to do upas or anything if you can do it if one can do it it's well and good nothing wrong but if one cannot do it and he is dragging and dragging and that's what i think that's what i mean person on spiritual path knows that while he is progressing on the spiritual development stage then there is associative auspicious activities are present he is aware of it now knowledge now this one is a do we have time oh yeah we still have 10 minutes so a, a couple of more slides are two three more slides are there knowledge has capacity to know self now that the uh, uh, jaychand ji chabra uh, i mean jaychand ji he is changing uh, track like bit and says is coming back to the uh, uh, main question knowledge has a capacity to know self and alien objects means knowledge has a swapar prakash uh, capacity or ability now right faith in a right faith state during experiencing phase remember this word during during experiencing phase means i am experiencing my eternal soul substance that means at that time his attention his knowledge is focused to the eternal true nature of the self this is self illuminating proper property 
means Swa Prakasha. Remember, I am and grows within myself at this stage. And that means me, um, um, the knowledge mode with his ability as a self illuminating property illuminates the eternal soul substance. Now, at the same time, there is presence of degree of inclination of attachment depending on the spiritual stage he is on. Now, what is happening? This is little, little uh, 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 microscopic point. So just put your attention for a few minutes. What is happening here? While a soul is experiencing his eternal true nature, he is in the experiencing phase. At that time, his knowledge attribute also keeps on doing both the function of knowing self and knowing alien objects. So, knowing self means it, the, the knowledge mode knows eternal soul substance. That's okay. That's that's understandable. But at the same time, there is degree of inclination of attachment, degree of rag present depending on the spiritual state. At the fourth spiritual state, there is a Opratyakhyani Vankasai means uh, anger, deceit, ego are present. And fifth spiritual development, Pratyakhyani Kasai is present. And sixth spiritual development stage, Sanjwalan Kasai is present. Means decreasing, in, uh, decreasing intensity and quality of those uh, 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 increase of attachment are present depending on fourth, fifth, or sixth stage. Fourth one is somewhat higher. Fifth one is moderate, and sixth one is extremely minimal uh, rag present. Now, now what's happening? The, uh, the, the rag is the alien object for him. This presence of rag during during the experiencing phase. This presence of rag, depending on the spiritual stage that I am in, that is present, and that is. A, a, a alien object for this soul. Knowledge mode with his own ability, Janvani Yogyatathi also ends up knowing this alien object in the form of Rag. Now, when fourth sp spiritual stage, fifth spiritual stage, seventh spiritual stage, the monk or the householder or Samyak Dasiji, they are enjoying their eternal soul substance, they are engrossed within. So that's all they know is engrossment within. At that time, underneath this undercurrent of rag going on, one soul is at, uh, enjoying the uh, engrossment with the super sensuous bliss, the soul is enjoying bliss at the time undercurrent, there is a sub a subclinical level, this rag is going on. What is what is that rag? Conventional point. One second. Hold it. Did I miss the slide or what happened here? Okay, but anyway, so what's happening? There's a abuddhi purvak no rag. Did I say that word abuddhi purvak here? I think it's coming in the next slide. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. When one is when one, one is in the experiencing state, the knowledge mode with his own nature and, and the nature of self and alien element property knows the eternal true nature of the self. That's a self illuminating property. But at the same time, there is a presence of non-perceivable rag present. Means, I am in that experiencing phase and if I am on a fourth spiritual development stage, then I have a, a non-perceivable rag in the form of apratyakhyani varankasai. It is present there. When I'm in the fifth spiritual development stage, then 
Abuddhi Prabhupada Rag means non perceivable Rag is of Pratyakhana Vankasai. And when I'm on a seven spiritual development state, then I have non perceivable Rag in the form of Sanjal and Kashai. Very feeble passions, very, very, very feeble toxic emotions. But they are subclinical level that soul is not able to pick it up. Knowledge mode is not able to pick them up. So those things are going. So knowledge mode in its alien element. Remember, we are in the experiencing state right now. Okay, we are in the experiencing state, and no more knowledge mode with his per prakasha capacity tries to tries to see this non perceivable rag but that state also remains non perceivable knowledge mode says let me try to see but knowledge mode is still somewhat crude in nature that it's not able to pick up this minutest form of a uh, rag which is non perceivable so that is happening in the experiencing phase now when the soul comes out of the experiencing phase, then what happens? Then eternal soul substance with the self-knowing ability, self-knowing capacity, he also knows associated with auspiciousness state due to his alien knowing ability. Knowing mode knows this partial purity and partial impurity state. The second bullet says that the knowing mode, knowledge mode knows the eternal soul substance means partial purity knowledge mode knows the uh, uh, um, auspic uh, associative auspicious state and so that's called partial impurity so knowing mode knows both the situation of uh, uh, impure mode uh, partial purity partial impurity state this is the conventional state knowing both the state partial impurity and partial purity means two things that they are known partial purity partial impurity more than one absolute state will only be involved with one and one and one unique thing only but here the two things partial impurity partial purity and that's why that's a conventional state motive for this state this state for the soul is for knowing purpose only and there is nothing to adore there's no adoration purpose adoration purpose is only my purity state how fast it is going up that's it impurity state is to be for knowing purpose that it's there needs to be thrown out that's it so these are the things that is happening so far and uh, uh, there is going to be uh, probably half a uh, half a uh, ne next time, probably in the next 30 minutes, we'll finish this Bhavarth of this uh, Jaichanji Chavra and then we'll be going to the next step. Any questions so far? The two or three or two, two, three different pathways uh, Jaichanji Chavra opened up over here, but most of the things we, ha we have known about it that soul and gold, we, know, we knew about it, and uh, um, other things we knew about it. Some things were a little bit new how I should be acting in my uh, 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 first spiritual development state and those things were somewhat this one. But we were aware of it, what to do about it, right? Yeah. I'm Are good. You? I don't, I don't uh, have any other questions now. Okay, good. Thanks. Kirigal, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of similarity between J. Chanji Chavra's uh, Bhavarth here and oh, yeah. chapter, in chapter 7, Moksha Prakasha. Is it? Okay, uh, you know, most of, uh, if you know only one scripture alone, you will be able to digest a lot more scriptures because, you know, the, 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 the presentation style of that presenter could be somewhat different, but the, 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 the nitty gritty thing will be the same because that's all it is. You cannot change the facts. I mean, but I also think they were colleagues, I think. Weren't they contemporaries or they were colleagues? No, no I don't think so. I don't think so. No, 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 no. no. They were not together. Okay. And again, remember, remember, even, I mean, you know, I go back to 60 years back in my life 
going to 10 miles away my auntie my, my four used to live and to go to that town was a big big deal for one month i'll be thinking my god i'm going that day that day i mean so this is 60 years we are talking and 10 miles going was a big deal now if you talk about two three hundred years back I mean, talk about Srimad Chandra, that he, he was only communicating with the writing the letter. You write later today and after three or four days, somebody receives that one and somebody writes back. I mean, you know, communication was very, very poor at the time. So even if they are same time frame, I don't think that they, they could be meeting each other because they're different towns. Probably. Anyway, okay, so we'll do the closing if there's no question. Javani ke gyan se suje lo kalo Sovani mastak namo sajapati hodra Nine tenth namo kamantra Good morning, Tom. Good morning. 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 Good morning.